Okay, so now we're going to simplify this, and we know we have to write each term in the term of ax to some power of n. And so now I have square roots in here, and so I have a couple of options I could do. I think the easiest thing, or perhaps the best thing, is to rewrite all of these as a fraction. So it's 5 to the power x to the power 1 plus 4x to the 1 half minus 2x to the 1 half. And so I'm just going to distribute it. And when I distribute here, I go 5, and I'm going to add the exponents. 1 plus a half is 3 halves. x and a half times 4x to, to this. I add the exponents. It's going to be 4 x to the power 1. Similarly, x here goes here, and these half plus a half makes to the power 1. And so then it's 5x to the 3 halves plus 2x. Okay? And so changing to fractional exponents is usually quite helpful. Let's try one more example. Okay, so doing this problem here, we have to simplify this. And I know this x to the power of 4 belongs to each term. And so if I start to consider this over x to the power of 4, I'm breaking it up into the three terms over x to the fourth minus 4x over x to the fourth. And I'm going to simplify both of these. I know when I simplify this, they subtract them and I get 1 on the top. So I get negative 3x. When I work on this one, I cancel here and I end up with plus 2 over x minus, and when I look at the last term, well that x cancels one of those, and so I'm left with three of them there. And so I get minus 4 over x cubed. And so now if I simplify and put it in the terms of ax to some power n, which is what the question is asking, this will be negative 3x plus 2x to the minus 1, minus 4x to the minus 3. Okay, and then we write it as thus. This is actually a really important skill for when you do calculus, um, and you're going to have to do something called the derivative with things that look like this. So this is actually...